What's up everyone, Patrick here, welcome back. Moving on to another question dealing with quadratics. So very similar to the previous video, what we gotta do is take each of these quadratics here and find the equation for each of them in standard form. So the final answer is going to be in this format over here. But what you gotta do with these kinds of questions is look at them and see what kind of properties are given, what kind of points are given on the parabola. And notice that in both of these, we are given the intercepts. Over here, the x-intercepts, and then over here, the x-intercepts. So to initially put this in equation, what we wanna do is actually put it into factored form because we have those intercepts. So we'll first get these factors over here, and then we could use the other point here, this point, negative 6, negative 18, and then this point over here, 3 and 8, we plug it in uh, for x and y to solve for that corresponding a value. And then once we have the a value, then we can expand all this and then finally get it into standard form. In part b, actually, there's going to be two ways to do it because this point that we're given is actually the vertex. So we can also uh, put this initially in vertex form like this. For this one, we can't do that because we're not given the vertex, right? This point here is not the vertex, but over here, we are given the vertex. So for part B, I'll do it in two ways, but uh, for part A, we could only do it this way. So notice how the two intercepts that we're given are x equals negative 9, x equals negative 4, and then how do you get these factors? Well, you bring everything to one side to have zero remaining on that right side. So notice we'll end up with this. So those right there, x plus 9, x plus 4, are the two factors where the two intercepts negative 9 and negative 4 are coming from. So what we can do over here, we plug in the factors. And then also notice we're given this point negative 6, negative 18. So we can plug in negative 18 for y, negative 6 for all the x's, because it's going through that point, this particular parabola. And then we'll have the a value to solve for. So we'll have negative 18 equals a, negative 6 plus 9, and then we'll have negative 6 plus 4. So we'd have negative 18 equals a, this would be 3, this here would be negative 2. So we'd end up with negative 6a, negative 18, divide both sides by negative 6. So the a value would be 3, like that. Okay, so the a value is 3, so where does that a value go? It's right here. This would end up being 3. And so now we have the equation of this parabola, but in factored form, we need it in standard form, so we would just expand everything. So we'd have 3, Expanding these two brackets, we'd end up with x squared, 9x plus 4x would give us 13x plus 36, like that. And then expand the 3 inside the bracket, we'd end up with 3x squared plus 39x plus, what would this be, 108? And so that right there ends up being the standard form quadratic for this parabola here. So if you took this, if you graphed it in Desmos, you'd end up with this parabola over here, and you would see that it does indeed go through that point, negative 6, negative 18. I mentioned this in the previous video. To check this, uh, if you have time on a test, what you could do is you could plug in the x values of all these points and make sure you get the corresponding y value. So if we plug in negative 9 for all these x values, you should get a y value 0. If you plug in negative 4 for all the x values, you should get a y value 0. If you plug in negative 6, for the x values, you should get a y value of negative 18. And then you could be more confident that your solution is correct. It's a nice check you can do. Okay, now moving on to part B, same thing actually, you know what, let's leave this uh, factored form. So again, I'm gonna do this in two ways because we're given both the intercepts and the vertex. We actually know this is the vertex too, not only for, from the diagram, sometimes you can't really trust the diagram because it might be a point very close to the vertex. But we know it's the vertex because notice that the two intercepts are 7 and negative 1. How do we find the axis of symmetry? Well, we add the intercepts and divide by 2. So that would give us 6 over 2, which would give us an x value of 3. 
and notice that this point here has an x value of 3. So we know that this is the vertex because this x value of 3 is the midpoint between 7 and negative 1. That's the axis of symmetry there. Right, so you can verify first that you have a vertex. So because we have the vertex and we have the two x-intercepts, again, we can use the vertex format as well. If we start off with the factored form, notice here from this negative 1, the factor is going to be x plus 1. And then notice from this factor, or that x-intercept rather, the factor is going to be x minus 7. Right, this factor of x plus 1 gives us an x-intercept of negative 1. That factor of x minus 7 gives us an x-intercept of positive 7. Then we could plug in 3 and 8 for x and y to get the corresponding y value. So we'd end up with a 4, negative 4, negative 16, a 8, Divide both sides by negative 16. A is negative 1 over 2 like that. Right? So we end up with the A value being negative 1 over 2 over here. And then if we get it in standard form, we have to expand everything. So expanding it, we'd end up with negative uh, 1 over 2. So we have x squared minus 7x plus x gives us negative 6x minus 7 like that. Expand negative 1 over 2x squared. Negative 1 over 2 times negative 6 gives us positive 3x. Negative 1 over 2 times negative 7 will give us positive 7 over 2 or 3.5. Okay, so that there ends up being the standard form quadratic for this parabola over here. Okay, so let's do it the other way. I'm going to write the answer over here. Let's do it the vertex form way and see if we get the, uh, the same solution. So the vertex form, we've done this in previous sections. This section for, focuses more on the intercepts because we're dealing with equations. But if we do it in that vertex form, remember the vertex form is this, where the vertex is h and k. So because we have that vertex 3 and 8, we could plug in x minus 3 squared plus 8, like that. And then from here, we can actually, we don't need both of these points. Um, we only need one of them. So you could plug in negative 1 and 0 for the x and y's or 7 and 0 for the x and y's, and you would get that same a value. Um, but what I'm going to do, and to show you why actually, quickly, because we, if we plug in negative 1 for x, we'd end up with negative 1 minus 3 squared, which would be negative 4 squared, which would give us 16. If we plug in 7 for x, we'd have 7 minus 3 squared, which would give us positive 4 squared, which would also give us 16. And then the rest is the same because for both of them, that y value is going to be 0. So it doesn't matter which point you plug in. Let's plug in 7 and 0. So we'd have 0 equals a, uh, 7 minus 3 squared plus 8. Bring the 8 over, so we'd have negative 8. 7 minus 3 to the power 2, we already said that's 16, so we'd have 16a. So we'd end up with an a value of negative 1 over 2, negative 8 over 16. But we take this a value, plug it in here. The expansion here is going to be a little different. Uh, so just be careful, right? Because the expansion here, we have this plus 8 on the end. Then we got x minus 3 times x minus 3. Then we got plus 8. So let's do this in steps. Negative 1 over 2. This here, x minus 3 times x minus 3 would give us x squared minus 6x plus 9. And we got the plus 8 on the end. The negative 1 half we distribute to only this bracket. So we'd have negative 1 over 2x squared plus 3x minus 9 over 2 plus 8. This 8, it's like over 1. We could change it to 16 over 2 just to get these as a common denominator. What do we end up with? Negative 9 plus 16 gives us positive 7. So we got positive 7 over 2 right there. And so notice this, this, the exact same thing. 
Okay, so we got this parabola in three different formats. Vertex form, we had in factored form before, I erased it, and standard form. And then getting the standard form, we did it in two different ways, got the same thing. So we could be pretty confident that's the correct answer. Again, if you want to check it, you could plug in all these x values here, make sure you get the corresponding y values.